So oil dilution, what is it? How bad is it? Should it keep you from buying a Honda? So I understand most of you that are asking spe specifically about this 1.5 uh, oil dilution problem. Obviously you know about the problem so you don't need me to go into depth about uh, what oil dilution is. But for those of you watching that aren't 100% familiar with what oil dilution is, short answer is it's basically unburned fuel that's getting into the engine oil. So unburned fuel gets sprayed into the, the cylinder, drips down the cylinder walls, past the piston ring and then starts to actually overfill the engine oil with uh, with unburned fuel. So oil dilution actually happens on, on all engines, but unfortunately on these Honda 1.5s, it's, it's happening at a higher rate than what is allowed. So everybody's engine out there is getting a little bit of unburned fuel down into the engine oil. It just so happens that this 1.5 turbo in the Hondas, it's happening a lot more than what is allowed. What's allowed, when testing the engine oil, the acceptable acceptable amount is 2.4% or less fuel dilution. So if you were to take an oil sample, 2.4% or less of that oil should have fuel in it. Anything above that is considered to be an unsafe amount. So the vehicles that are most affected by this oil dilution problems are the 2017-2018 Honda Civics and the 2016-2018 to Honda CRVs. I also see a lot of cases in the forums about it happening on that same year range Honda Accords but in our shop particular we've seen CRVs coming in with the problems and those year range of uh, Honda Civics. So what's causing this problem? What would cause Honda to all of a sudden create this engine? Uh, they've been known for all these years for having just amazing reliable engines and now all of a sudden they've got this engine that is widespread known for having oil problems that are leading to a lot of big deals. So, so what's causing it? That's a fairly long answer, but my abbreviated version is manufacturers are under a ton of pressure in order to make engines and vehicles way more fuel efficient and put out way less emissions. So they're trying to design this engine to build the power you want to where you actually want to drive the car, but then they're also trying to lower their scores as far as uh, fuel efficiency and emissions output goes. So Honda came out with this engine and it's actually a pretty impressive design just minus a couple of obvious issues. What they've done is they've gone to direct injection. So it just forces a lot of fuel into the engine. It's set up to run at a little bit lower operating temperature. And then obviously it has a turbo on there. So they're, they're building really good power out of 1.5 liters. But unfortunately, the, uh, the, the pressure of the turbo, the little bit lower operating temperatures, and the, just the mass amount of uh, fuel pressure being shoved into that engine it's just not getting burned off enough and that's what's causing the, the bulk of the problem. The majority of people having problems with this engine live in colder climates. So once again, what's causing the oil dilution is this engine's designed to run at a little bit lower operating temperature and we're, we're forcing fuel in through direct injection instead of it just kind of misting in there. It's really getting a good amount of liquid fuel in there. So the colder climates, what's happening is it's just not getting up to the right temperatures and then people are not driving them, especially in our area, they're not driving them long enough for the rest of that fuel to burn off. And that's kind of the, the biggest problem. So you'll notice that most of the complaints coming out about this engine started in colder climates. Most people living in, you know, 80, 90, 100 degree temperature year round is doing okay. Here in Utah, where we're at right now, it's great. You know, it's a 100 degree day, uh, probably going to not have many issues. But this winter, we went several months with uh, freezing temperatures and snow everywhere you know so those are the months that uh, we start to see customers coming in with a good amount of fuel left over in that oil the other people that are having the bulk of these problems are people that don't have a very long commute so if you start one of these Hondas and you got to drive you know 45 minutes or so before you're turning it off especially if it's freeway driving our customers aren't having many problems most of our customers having problems are people that don't drive very far you know so they they start up their vehicle cold they 
drive five minutes to work, turn it off. And then as that vehicle sits there, all that unburned fuel just settles down past the rings, gets into the oil. If you're commuting a long way, those clients were just, they're not having the same same problems as the, the people that are only driving a few minutes at a time. All right, so let's talk about what's gonna happen if you own one of these vehicles. So let's go worst case first. Obviously, I'm an optimist, so let's hopefully not let it get to be that worst case. But worst case, what'll happen is your oil will get diluted by enough fuel. And then once it's diluted enough, it's obviously gonna change what how it works. So all oil is supposed to do is it's supposed to lubricate all the parts that are moving at a very high rate. And it cuts down on friction. Friction causes heat. So uh, if you allow the oil to get diluted by too much fuel, it's gonna change the viscosity. So it's gonna thin it out and it's not gonna lubricate. It's gonna cause extra friction and that will eventually lead to a ca catastrophic failure. You know, you'll have one of the major bearings in the bottom half of the engine fail and you will need to replace the engine. Now, that's worst case scenario. Thankfully, we're not seeing that. We're kind of having our customers that own these watch for a, a very specific few signs. And then we're obviously, as the professional, we're checking our customers' cars for these as they come in. So one of the first concerns that uh, came about when this oil dilution problem was happening is people were getting a strong fuel smell either inside the car as they were driving it or the first complaint I got from one of my clients was when they would get home and park it in their garage, they could smell fuel. So it came into us the first time and we checked for, for fuel leaks uh, and evap leaks, didn't find anything, but once we left it in the bay for a little while after a short drive, we could smell that smell. As soon as you pulled the oil dipstick, it was obvious that the fuel smell was coming from the engine oil. So, so the first thing to, to watch for if you own one of these cars is a fuel smell. The second thing that happens on these cars is that actually gets diluted enough to where it actually starts to misfire. So oil levels get a little bit over full. This vehicle is designed to kind of suck back in those vapors and burn them a second time. So once those vapors get high enough, it'll actually start to make the engine misfire, almost like you need to do a tune-up, which you do, but you obviously got to get all that fuel and oil out of there as well. The third thing we're noticing, once again, this is generally in the winter months, is it has an extended crank or it don't start at all. Engines are harder to start when it's cold and having an excess fuel in the oil makes it to where if it's a really cold morning, your car is going to struggle to start or not start at all. Okay, so now let's talk about what we're doing for our customers to avoid major problems. Major problems being catastrophic engine failure. The number one thing we're doing is we are shortening the interval for your oil changes. So my Honda customers, we change their oil every 5,000 miles. Uh, I know Honda recommends, I believe, 9,000 miles on these engines. That's too long, especially if you're doing a lot of stop and go driving. The easiest way to keep that oil dilution low is to change the oil just a little bit more frequently. The other thing we're doing for our customers to avoid major problems is uh, Honda's come out with a couple of software updates. So anytime a Honda comes in, we are checking the, the computers and checking it against some software we have to make sure it's got the latest and greatest programming in it. So the main program updates that have happened recently from Honda, especially in these cold climates, is they, they bump it up a little bit to where the engine will actually run a little bit higher operating temperature. And then the other thing, they actually changed some of the shift points on the automatic transmission to help it maintain that operating temperature. Seems a little weird that you can actually fix an engine problem, but everything's controlled by software in these computers, so it's making a big difference. One of the issues I didn't actually address yet is not only are these engines having some oil dilution problems, but they're actually having some carbon buildup problems as well. Uh, anytime you got an engine that's super efficient, it's common for them to have some carbon buildup as well. Every 30,000 miles for all of our Honda customers, especially our Honda customers with this engine, we run a very specific process and a very specific product that we uh, get from Valvoline that actually mists into the, the air intake, kind of gets onto the valves and actually breaks up that carbon and it'll actually spits it out the tailpipe. It's a pretty lengthy process, smells horrible, pretty aggressive cleaners, but it's done a really good job of uh, kind of getting rid of that carbon before it becomes a problem. The last thing we're doing for our Honda customers is uh, to avoid problems with this engine is we're educating them. We're educating about the problem and what causes it and what they can do to avoid it. We only see your vehicles, you know, every 5,000 miles when they come in. So during those 5,000 miles, there's some things that our clients can be doing. So just being aware of the problem. So obviously letting our customers know what's causing the problem, they're more likely to take their car on a little bit 
bit longer drive, uh, knowing that short drives are causing this uh, oil dilution problem. If they have been doing a lot of short drives, we ask them to check their oil. You know, maybe every third time you put fuel in, maybe you should pop your hood, pull the oil dipstick out, make sure it's not over full and uh, smelling like fuel. Uh, and then let us know as these things kind of pop up. All right, so to sum it up, yes, there's for sure a confirmed problem with oil dilution on these 1.5 liter turbos. I don't feel it's a big enough problem to where you should get rid of the car if you have one. I think there's just a few things you need to do. You need to start changing your oil every 5,000 miles. You need to make sure that software update is done so that it's getting up to the right operating temperature and then drive it a little bit longer whenever you can. You know, obviously that doesn't mean anytime you got to just drive five minutes, you got to worry about it. But if you're one of those drivers that has kind of shorter commutes, just keep in mind that that's a little bit harder on it than if you can drive longer. So maybe combine a couple errands together and make your drive time a little bit longer. And just like anything, all, all cars are having this oil dilution problem. Unfortunately for Honda, they had a few year span where it was pretty bad. But by us changing our oil every 5,000 miles, doing that software update, running some cleaners through these engines thir every 30,000 miles, we're not having to replace these engines. We're able to catch it and keep an eye on it. They're still a good car. Yes, it's a problem, but do your part. You're gonna be just fine.